On a quiet street in the small Saskatchewan village of Purdue sits a hidden gem, a treasure chest of literature. The weathered word books on the covered windows is the only indication of what's inside the unassuming building. Ralph Crawford came to Purdue in 2004 with his overwhelming inventory of books in tow. A year later, Crawford's used books opened its doors. I brought three transport trailer loads and, and I f then I had a bus that we used for a church bus and I filled it with things and, and then I rented two three-ton trucks to haul the rest. Prior to setting up shop in the community of about 300, Crawford ran a bookstore in Sheffield, New Brunswick. When he found out the Trans Canada would bypass his store, he started looking for real estate out west and in 2000, bought this former bank building, which dates back to the early 1900s. The very first night when I had moved out here and I looked up at the building and I thought, this building will be here long after I'm not. His passion for written works began at a young age, eventually setting him up for a long career in the book business. The pastor in our church in Sheffield, New Brunswick, was retiring and he knew of my interest in Christian literature, and he gave me most of his library. And as a result, that really gave me a taste for old books, because some of his books went back into the 1700s. Not everything Crawford owns is on display, but he estimates his collection tops 300,000. For comparison, the Library of Parliament contains over 600,000 items and has a staff of more than 350 people. I put kind of little odds and ends that I think people are going to spot and want. Unlike your typical modern bookstore, you'll have to rely on Crawford to point you in the right direction, as there's no database to search through. But the 73-year-old has a pretty good sense of what's in stock. This is more fiction in this area right here. I have a general idea. Uh, many times, though, you could ask me about a book and I can say with confidence that I don't have it because I know I've never seen it. Crawford suggests leaving some time to browse. You may stumble across something you didn't know existed. It's not necessarily a store to come in and be able to get the book instantly that you're looking for, but it's, uh, it's a good place to come and I can usually show the person to the section where it should be. His collection is diverse. Fiction, poetry, classics, Canadiana, business. That's just a handful of the many genres you can find on the shelves. If you rifle through the cookbooks, you may discover one of his oldest, published in Paris in 1659. All procured through various sources over the course of nearly 50 years. After that pastor had given me most of his library, and I thought, if he has books to give away, there must be a lot of people who have books they would like to sell. So I started buying books and going to auctions. I've still been buying books that, you know, I always say I'll quit buying books when, when you see them carrying me feet first out. Crawford admits the book business is a bit slow. He doesn't advertise and relies on word of mouth. I can always handle more, let's put it that way. But it's, it's a labor of love. He also blames electronic access in part but is confident books will always have a place. And if you're a collector of books and you like first editions, well, you don't have a first edition on your screen. If you like signed copies, you don't have signed copies on your electronic device. There are a couple of things to keep in mind if you plan on paying Crawford a visit. There's no electronic means of paying, so it's best to have cash or checks handy. The store is open from May until October, Monday to Saturday, but as the shop's lone employee, generally it's best to give him a call and make sure he's around. Just a few odds and ends. At 73, you have to wonder when Crawford will close this chapter of his life. The short answer is... I just go one day at a time.